Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. State Representative Dan Ugassi of the 65th District, currently serving my third term. For the last six years, I've been speaking to people in this room, as well as Democrats on both the House floor and everywhere else I could find them, about Illinois' lackluster performance as an economy and the need for the state to change the way it governs. Basically, we need a system that will let our state and our people prosper. However, instead of hearing what I and other Republicans have said, the Democrats have continued down their same path of poor policy towards business, sometimes doubling down on these policies. Let's take, for example, the governor's last budget proposal of increasing taxes on businesses by nearly $1 billion. That's not what we need. And for six years, instead of taking us seriously and listening to us, the Democrats, including and most prominently the governor, have resorted to name calling, things such as naysayers, carnival barkers, or doom grifters, just to name a few. And they've also provo promoted a different narrative, one that says that all is well. Well, it's not. Ladies and gentlemen, the proof has arrived, and it shows we, the Republicans, have been and are right. In case you missed it, Moody's Analytics recently issued a report at the request of COGFA stating what we as Republicans have been saying this whole time. Illinois businesses are overtaxed, they're overregulated, and the recently enacted energy policy is going to be the linchpin that will cripple our economy. I'm joined today by my fellow Republicans, Amy Ellick of the 111th District, Marty McLaughlin, McLaughlin of the 52nd District, and C.D. Davidsmeyer of the 100th District. We are here today to discuss the various problems the state's facing, factors that may be adding to some of the problems, and some of the solutions we as Republicans have to address them. So if you've read the report I mentioned or saw the Tribune's editorial about it, you know the big takeaway is this. Illinois businesses are overtaxed, much the same way its people are. We Republicans have been talking about this problem for a very long time, most recently with Rep. Rozinga and my uh, introduction of HB 4866, a property tax relief plan that is not only projected to save taxpayers and businesses alike $82.4 billion over the next 21 years, but it moves the state much more in line with its obligation of being the primary payer for schools in the state of Illinois. Again, we tell you there are solutions to our problems. In addition to providing tax relief statewide, this plan would also help communities that need it most, which in turn will help address our worst in the nation status for economic racial equality as found by Wallet Hub last year. And remember, this status came upon us while we were under 24 years of Democrat government control. Still, taxation's not our only problem. Overregulation and high cost of litigation are there as well. Once again, we have bills to tackle these problems. We have filed a host of workers' compensation reforms. These will help businesses and taxpayers both save money, yet still take care of our workers. Also, I filed HB 4080. It will provide some tort reform. It's another step in lowering business costs in litigation. Finally, this report points out that the recently enacted energy policy, CJA, that the state put in place is going to take away our last true benefit to business. That is cheap, reliable energy. We need to fix this now before it does further damage. However, there is one positive takeaway from this report, and that is Illinois, despite all this happening, despite the overtaxation, the overregulation, and the energy path that we're going down, still is situated very well to right this ship. We can fix it, the report points out. We are and remain still the transportation hub of the nation, both for rail, air, and road. It won't stay with us forever. If you notice, we're now, we now have the fourth busiest airport in the nation, not the first. We have a highly educated, skilled, and well-trained workforce with one of the strongest worth ethics, if not the strongest, in the entire nation. But as the report points out, they're leaving our state. And we're still 
a major player in the nation's economy. In nation's economy. We are still one of the biggest economic drivers in the nation. But this, too, won't last forever, not unless we do something to fix it. For years, six years, I've been here asking the Democrats, work with us, consider our ideas. We understand what numbers look like. We understand what votes are like. But we have good ideas that will help the state and the people here in Illinois. And if we're going to solve this problem, if we're going to move this state in the right direction, they must work with us before it's too late. Now going to turn it over to Representative Amy Ellen. Good afternoon. I'm State Representative Amy Ellick, and I represent Madison County in the Metro East. I'm here today with my colleagues because I believe our state can be a destination for job growth. I believe our state can and should be more competitive with our border states, and it starts with less taxation. My district borders the St. Louis metro area. Missouri's unemployment rate is at 3.3 percent, while, while Illinois is at 4.7 percent. According to the Tax Foundation, Illinois ranks as the 37th worst state business tax climate compared to Missouri ranked as the 12th best business, business tax climate. And of course, let's not forget about Illinois' high property tax rate. We are home to the second highest property tax burden in the country. According to WalletHub, Missouri's property tax rate is 0.91% compared to 2.11% here in Illinois. This means on a home valued at $200,000, Illinois homeowners are paying a difference of $2,400 more each year on property taxes. Just last week in a revenue committee hearing, we heard testimony on high property taxes causing Illinoisans to lose their homes due to the tax sale process. This especially affects elderly and low income people on fixed incomes. When will we finally make positive impactful changes to lower Illinois rates so that people can afford to live here? Our surrounding states have lower taxes on families and small businesses. If we want to create more jobs and stability for Illinoisans, then we should look at what our neighboring states are doing. Reduced taxes can incentivize innovation and investment by allowing entrepreneurs to retain more of their profits to reinvest in their ventures or start new businesses. Lower taxes can help keep existing businesses by reducing the cost of doing business and preventing companies from relocating to areas with more favorable tax climates. Less taxes can contribute to a more vibrant economy that benefits both businesses and every taxpayer in the state. Thank you, and I'll now turn it over to Representative Marty McLaughlin. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Martin McLaughlin from the 52nd District uh, in Illinois. Uh, prior to my comments, I just want uh, to make everyone aware I am a small business owner who has been investing in bonds and stocks on behalf of my clients for over 30 years. Um, so when it comes to Moody's ratings and other Fitch and others, I have been uh, intimately aware of the credit rating of Illinois for some time. Last month, the governor took to the podium at the state capitol and addressed a joint meeting at the General Assembly. Among the many flowery remarks, on our fiscal state, the governor spoke about our standing with Moody's in the past week. In the February report, which starts off in a summary, as previously stated, our unemployment in the state's 4.7 above our region of 3.7. As it relates to the state's credit rating, which has been touted by the governor as a reason for for optimism, and after nine credit upgrades, we need to understand where we stand or, or to the rest of the country. We are still the worst state in the nation and pay the highest interest cost, um, hundreds of millions of dollars to our taxpayers because of our poor fiscal management. Moody's quotes the current view of Illinois that the risks lean to the downside in Illinois and make us more vulnerable than any other state to a negative shift in the national global economy because our lean reserves and heavy fixed costs. Those are not my words. Those are the analysts at Moody's. Moody's mentioned that our state, although attempting to present ourselves in a positive manner, always seems, again a quote from Moody's, a few steps behind the other Midwest states in jobs and income growth. They mentioned Chicago's economy as showing signs of fatigue, and Lake County, which is in my district, which disappointingly has a 5% unemployment rate. And I do need to mention Lake County does border with the state of Wisconsin. Illinois is well below the average performer in what Moody describes 
as the Midwest's slow-growing economy. The governor's budget address did not specifically mention, but today, this morning, in COGFA, we did talk about not honoring the rollback on net operating loss deductions. And if that's a mouthful of word salad for non-business people, what that will do is it will add another half a billion dollars to existing businesses in Illinois. We need to remember that businesses and corporations are the lifeblood and the employers of our state. Further, many of these corporations are owned by public employee labor unions, by private sector employees. What I often hear is Wall Street and Main Street are very different. That's not true. Main Street owns most of these businesses, and when they do well, our residents can retire well. Finally, Moody's ranks Illinois in relation to other states on a corporate tax perspective, as Representative Ellick mentioned. We rank the lowest, or to put it in proper perspective, we have the highest burden of corporate taxation relative to Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, and Iowa. The Tribune's concern are legitimate as it relates to increased energy costs. One of the reasons that data centers came to the state of Illinois a few years ago to great fanfare was because of our reliable low-cost energy. When businesses can't rely upon reliable low-cost energy, they will choose other states. Solutions. I will support any real tax cuts this session, and I would love to see my colleagues pass House Joint Resolution 44. I've been speaking about it for a number of weeks. I'm co-sponsoring with Representative Reich to have a Commission on Fiscal Reform, which will create a standing budget committee to conduct forensic audit of all state spending and build a budget using zero-sum budgeting. What I'd like to see is some of my Democratic colleagues, and not zero, support this so we can actually get some transparency, not only on the hundreds of millions that we're budgeting, but where it's spent and who benefits. Finally, we cannot keep adding $2 billion in structural social program spending each year. It's completely unsustainable, and it's out of control. The governor may have many allies in Springfield that are the go-along, get-along club, but this fiscal insanity needs to stop. The people of Illinois are at a breaking point. Business owners and hardworking individuals are the backbone of this great state of Illinois. We need to start to be honest about where we are as a starting point and where we need to go and what we need to do. And I thank you for being here today. Hi, I'm, I'm State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer. I represent the 100th District, which is all our part of 10 counties in, in rural Illinois, a, a very agricultural district. Um, I'm going to be very brief. Uh, I, I also co-chair uh, COGFA, and, and this morning we were discussing um, the progression of our revenue and what we are expecting in the coming year. And they specifically came in uh, almost a billion dollars lower than what the uh, what the governor came in with because the governor is proposing almost $1.1 billion of, of additional new taxes, uh, over $900 million of which are, are directly on businesses. And, and these taxes are on machinery rich businesses. And when I say rich, I mean they have to put in a lot of dollar investments for, for this type of thing. But, but we're asking these businesses to pay more because we are overwhelmed by things like the illegal immigrant crisis in, in Chicago, right? Be, being a sanctuary state and a sanctuary city has had a huge impact on the state of Illinois. Uh, the last couple of years, we've spent almost $2 billion on, on uh, uh, free services for individuals who are, uh, are, are not Illinoisans while we, we leave other Illinoisans behind, whether it's senior citizens, whether it's uh, uh, programs for the developmentally disabled. So uh, we, we have to do better for the state of Illinois. We have to do better for, uh, for our businesses and ensure that, um, that they have the opportunity to, to grow and to hire. Uh, as, as we look at the unemployment or the employment numbers, uh, just over the past couple months, we've seen private employment go down by almost 40,000 and government employment go up by almost 40,000. So we need to look at this, uh, this trend and we need to flip it around because when government's spending more and businesses are cutting back, the numbers just don't work. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we'd like to open it up to uh, any questions that you may have. some $900 million in tax cuts. 
that's uh, coming? What kind of, if in the, that the governor had talked about for his budget proposal, what kind of, how does that come into play after uh, July 1st, you know, with everything they've been talking about? If that would be tax, taxes. You mean tax increases? Tax, 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 tax increases. Tax increases. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> we didn't support that. We didn't see that. We, we, tax cuts we tax would cuts support, we yes. Support. Why did I say tax cuts? Tax, yeah, how does that come into play with you, do you want to sure, yeah. absolutely. Th this is going to act, absolutely drive us in the wrong direction. Moody's report lays it out very clearly. We need to start moving in the other direction, lowering taxes on business and letting Illinois prosper. Look, I have the best crime prevention, homeless uh, solution answer in, in the country. It's opportunity. But we're not going to have opportunity for our people, and we're not going to have young people staying here, which the demographics show in this report, if we don't change how we're doing things and let them know that opportunity is here because we are going to lower taxation, we're going to take this report seriously, and we are going to allow our businesses to do, do what they do best, conduct business, grow, and prosper. So, so COGFA actually has a, um, a higher revenue estimate based on current, current policy by about $250 million, um, which, which COGFA has, has, has historically been conservative on their estimates. But they also recognize the fact that the governor is proposing that $1.1 billion in additional taxes. And, and that $913 million uh, in additional taxes on business, the reality is that decreases investment, that decreases machinery purchase, that decreases the, uh, the investment in new technology. Uh, and, and the reality is uh, Illinois has a lot of uh, manufacturing that, that needs that continued investment. So, you know, we, we need, to, need to focus on natural economic growth as opposed to, um, as, as opposed to increased taxes. So we at one point were at 20, paying 27% of our budget towards pensions. This would say that between uh, the relief we would be giving school districts on a per pupil basis and pension costs, we would set it at 25% of the budget. It would still leave extra money and as the budget grows, there still be more money for other things. The idea, though, is to start giving property tax relief. So as we gave each school district a dollar, they'd have to reduce their levy by a dollar. This would, though, in turn, generate more businesses and people coming to areas instead of leaving because property taxes would then be lower. And as business grows and people start coming back to an area, the tax base is then spread out and we start getting more revenue both in state coffers as well as local property taxes while, when there's more people paying in. I'd like to uh, add some, Can I just add real quick? Um, yeah, I completely support uh, Representative Ugasti's program, Representative Uzinga. Um, one thing I do need to mention is the grocery tax elimination, which all of us support here, 11 of the 13 towns in my community uh, are up in arms because they have no way to replace that lost revenue. My great fear is that the towns and communities will go to the quickest, fastest, easiest thing to do, which is to raise property taxes in their levy. Some of the towns that I had spoken to would have to raise them 18 to 35 percent overnight to make up the loss of the grocery tax revenue. So I don't want to speak for my colleagues, but as Republicans, we're for tax cuts almost at any time for any reason, whenever possible. But last year, uh, CD, the GRF, I believe the Grocery Replacement Fund, in COGFA, replace the money on the temporary grocery tax. The governor needs to be specific to these towns and municipalities to replace the loss of that tax revenue. Otherwise, I'm fearful that a short-term property tax increase will be forthcoming to replace that revenue that has been lost through the grocery tax. I want to be specific. We're against the grocery tax, but we need it to be replaced in the general revenue fund, hopefully from LGDF, which is stuck at 6%, and by state agreement should go back to 10 so if we do that, we can make these towns whole, 
through current state budgeting, and I think we're all for that. But my great fear from the 11 mayors is that they will be hamstrung, have huge holes in their budgets, and are going to need to do something. If they're not home rule, they'll go to the property tax levy, and we don't want to see that. So just overall, then, on COGSA's report this morning, it's, I mean, it's another year of upward revenue revision. What do you just make of that, seeing that for, I don't know how many years in a row now, but... Yeah, so, so the... the um, the increase that we're seeing is less than what surrounding states are seeing. So while, while it is a, a continued growth in, in revenue, in taxes paid to the state of Illinois, it's, it's a decrease um, compared to where other, other economies are in states surrounding. So if, if you look at the last decade, Illinois has gone from about a little over 18, probably 18 and a half billion dollars in revenue from, from income tax to $33 billion, right? That, that is, we're, we're looking at almost doubling our, our income tax over the last decade. And, and uh, what, what do we have to show for it? We still have uh, court orders that require us to invest in, uh, in services for people who cannot take care of themselves. And, and we're doing the minimal to help those individuals while we continue to make more and more promises to others who can uh, take care of themselves. Sorry, I think everyone. Oh, one more, one more, one more. <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to ask you this, um, Dan. The House Speaker um, spokeswoman, she said that it's unfortunate that you haven't voted for the budgets that Democrats have passed to earn in Illinois the nine credit rating upgrades. And, um, So, so, so since we had a conversation before, I just want to make sure I'm clear. This was in your request to the Speaker's office about this report and our press conference about it, correct? Yes. So they pivoted Im immediately away from instead of addressing what you asked them about, which is this report, which doesn't paint a good picture for Illinois, and went to the budget. So I'll be happy to talk to, to you about the budget, if that's what they prefer to talk about. I would be happy to vote for a budget. I came down to vote for budgets, in favor of budgets, in which we are allowed to participate and discuss and have meaningful input into how the budget looks at the end of the year. Unfortunately, since I have been here, that has not been the case. Republicans have not been included. And that having been the case, our priorities are not included. Because if our priorities were included, instead of spending money on failed policies, that don't deliver crime prevention, we would have opted for reductions in certain things, uh, taxes and things like that, so that our businesses can prosper and grow, and we would have more opportunity for people, like I said, and we would be in a better, su better situation as a state as a whole on many different levels. Opportunity and, and growth is the way out of just about any problem you can almost imagine. Sometimes governments needed to step in, but a lot of times, just let people go and take care of themselves. They will. Those nine credit rating increases, though, I am glad we have them. I am glad those budgets brought that about. But if you look at why Illinois' economy is doing so much better, why the revenue has increased so much, it is in large part due to inflation. And our costs stayed what they were, but inflation ticked everything up. So while we benefited from it, our people still aren't benefiting because their wages haven't kept up with it. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks,